So the next point we're going to be working on is just kind of a nice to know kind of thing, not a need to know. So if this is really putting you um, in a stressful situation, just work on your ACT review question. But these are some things that you probably will see on the ACT exam, so at least listen to this and try some of the problems. So we're going to talk about this thing called a reciprocal identity. So when I see tangent, I can rewrite it in a different form. And these are called reciprocals. Because if I take and write the reciprocal of tangent, I'm going to get 1 over cotangent. Because they reciprocate each other. That's why they're that's called the reciprocal identity. So likewise, cotangent is going to be 1 over tangent. So sometimes it's going to be nice to get rid of cotangent and put a tangent. Um, with the sine, we know that's 1 over cosecant, and I should be putting an x in there because that's my variable. One thing to think about when you're doing your WAMAP, you want to make sure that you're using the right, correct variables. And cosecant is 1 over sine of x. We talked earlier about the c and the x kind of thing going together. And then when I have cosine, it's 1 over cosecant of x. So these are just definitions that we were given. And when I have secant, it's 1 over the cosine of x. So what we don't do anymore is write cosine to the negative 1 power that is not equal to 1 over cosine. This has a different meaning. It's just like when I had um, a negative 1 on my function, it was the inverse. And that's exactly what that negative 1 means here. It means an inverse not to reciprocate. So we had to have a reciprocal. So we just named it something different, a cosine secant. You're right, the names don't go together. Why did they do that? Well, this, these words were transcribed, and they were transcribed incorrectly. But it's too late to go back now. So when I'm looking at tangent, let's see, this is a quotient. Quotient is looking at a division kind of problem. And if I think back about tangent, and I'm looking at my unit circle, and I have an angle in my unit circle. We're going to be doing this here in just a minute. And I do tangent. Tangent is COA. So it says take the opposite of that angle, which is Y, over the adjacent, which is X. I can see that that is a quotient. But it says it wants it in terms of sine and cosine. So if you recall again from this picture, I can look and see that the sine of my angle is, let's see, sine is... H, S, O, H, so O is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1. So we had already kind of clarified that this value of Y is now the sine, and this value of X is the cosine. Now, if these X's are bothering you, I could have called this angle theta, and we do that again. So the letter X is meaning two things. In one instance, an angle. In the other instance, it is the horizontal length of the leg. It's this length right here. So we'll kind of maybe go back and forth a little bit so you can see that. So if I'm looking for cotangent, and I know it's the reciprocal, so this x and y doesn't bother you, I'm just going to make this theta. It says I'm going to reciprocate. That was my reciprocal identity above. So I've reciprocated it and wrote it as a quotient. All right, so now when I see cotangent, cotangent I don't know really much about, but I like to see that it is sine and cosine. Let's go further down here and let's look at this diagram. It's similar to what I had. I'm going to call this distance x, this distance y, and we're going to call that distance 1. It could also be r, but if I make it be 1, it is a unit circle. So we labeled them, and I guess the directions say r, so I'll put an r in there. And then I'm going to write the Pythagorean identity of the lengths of the sides. So I know in a right triangle, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This is a form of a circle. This most likely would be on the ACT test. This is your center. So notice paired with x is a 0 and paired with y. I could have wrote it a little bit differently and put in those values 0, 0 for the shift. But that just is going to tell me left or right. But now if I replace these with trig functions, I'm going to make x. Well, let's see if I go back and look at x. That was the cosine. Now notice where I put the square. Okay, it's on the word cosine. And then I'm going to add sine squared 
because that is the y. Notice this angle right here is theta, and that's equal to, I'm going to call r to be 1, so I'm going to write, um, I have a right triangle in a unit circle. Another way I could write this, if that's bothering you, that little 2, you could also go cosine theta quantity squared, but as you can kind of tell, symbolically in math, we try to be very efficient. And people would say, yeah, that doesn't look very efficient to me. So they would write it with this 2 right by the word cosine. So it means two of those. And if you recall, that was a graph that you had earlier. So remember, this is a video. So if you're going, if I'm going too fast, remember I'm standing here in an empty room. Nobody's asking me questions. And I have my back to where you normally would be sitting. So if I'm going too fast, stop me. If I'm going too slow, speed me up. So we're going to finish this stage. So what does the Pythagorean relationship hold true? Does it hold true in the other three quadrants? Well, what do you think? Well, because I'm squaring things, even if I had a negative, it would be turn into a positive. So we have the square idea that's going to turn everything into a positive value. And it's always going to be a right triangle. So yes, it does hold true. And then the next step is to divide the Pythagorean relationship. So we're going to finish this, and then we'll go on to another video. So if I take the Pythagorean relationship, which we said was cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, we're in a right triangle, so I'm going to use 1 instead of r. And it says divide by cosine squared theta. Notice, every single one of these, and this is a hint for some of the work I want you to try, every single one has to be divided by cosine squared. Why might I do this? Well, I've got cosine squared over cosine squared, which is 1, plus. Now I'm looking at the second fraction. I believe that looks like tangent, but it's tangent squared. And we call this, or these, the Pythagorean identity. Sometimes these are called the cousins. They're a relationship that came off of, like, the parent, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So if I take 1 over cosine squared, that is, remember, the change up of the letters, that's secant squared. So that is one of the cousins. And likewise, I can take, again, my Pythagorean. And this time, instead of dividing it by cosine squared, let's divide it by sine squared. And again, you must remember to divide every single piece by the same function. And so if I'm looking at this relationship, cosine squared over sine squared, that is cotangent squared theta plus 1 equals 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared theta. So that's the derivation of the Pythagorean from the unit circle, knowing x, y, and 1, as well as Pythagorean on a right triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then we've just rewritten them into their cousins.